Right, here we are in the base of the Wolf Rock Lighthouse. I'm um, facing the phosphor bronze sort of gunmetal doors that are, are shut to keep the sea out. I'm in a, a little passageway which is only perhaps three foot wide and about 12 foot deep and this is what comes straight in from the landing well you got the landing down below then you got um, several dog steps to come up the side of the tower then into these doors now the doors are fastened by two great big um, bronze latches that uh, come out from the walls and sort of drop down into slots to hold the door against any sea and there's two bolts, one at the top, one at the bottom. These doors overlap each other and they weigh many tons I should think, great big bronze jobs. And then to make certain nowadays they have a couple of thick planks of wood here that they hammer into place to, to further sort of bolster it against the weather. The station now being unmanned of course, it's now um, Friday the 2nd of December 1994 and the first thing you come across as you come down this passageway is on your right looking into the tower is the uh, life belt with Wolf Rock Lighthouse written on it and a couple of ropes hanging up there now this place would normally be where under the floor would be stored the, the water for the keepers but now it's unmanned this whole area now is full up with fuel tanks stainless steel tanks and they tower above me um, I'm five foot five and a half and these are a good six foot perhaps seven foot high and there's six tanks in all I'm looking up above me head just above the the passageway when it, as it opens up into the room where the tanks are and it's got maximum fuel there um, looks like 6,800 litres of diesel right um, at the far end is a aluminium ladder leading up 11 rungs through a tiny little hole into the next room and we'll see if we can get up there if I can manage up this ladder a bit of a squeeze right up to the next level I'll just drop this cover <laughs> that's to stop me falling back down the hole it's a see-through cover grilled I can see down into the floor below right in this room um, let's see if I can get any measurements I stand my back against the wall. One, two, three, four, five, up against the next wall. Five steps. Right, there's only one window in this room, and uh, that's totally blanked off against the weather again. And it's probably about three foot deep, the window, the recess. So that's how thick the wall is at this level. Uh, granite blocks this place is built with. In here is just some pumps, four pumps on the floor. This is all the automatic stuff. Pumping the fuel and a hand pump on the wall. And then you get the first proper staircase here. And it's in the left of the room here, spiraling up to the next level. And it's all made of metal. And to the left of it, is a brass handrail that hasn't seen polish since the keepers left. Right under the stairs there's this little cupboard, curved door, and it's just a uh, rope storage. And if you pop your head in there you can actually see the granite blocks here, how it's put together. Quite neat. Right, right up to the next level. another hatch I've got to drop down there that's the last one 
Oh, this is a thick metal one. Oh. Right, that one's totally blanked off, you can't see through there. In here, what well, looks like it used to be the winch room because there's a another door similar to the one downstairs, two floors down. Uh, phosphor bronze again, a couple of latches, and these great big arms that latch it shut. And two little windows in the top of this one. The wind's getting up out there. Right, that one, I should think it's about four foot deep recess on that door. And then as we come in through that little door, um, to the right of me is the hatch I just came up the steps. To the left of me is more steps piling up and the room opens up. See how wide this one is. One, two, three, four, five. Seems to be six wide. Basically because uh, they've just made more room in this area, that's all. Um, in this room now is, there's a shower little electric heater for it, a toilet, flush toilet, another life belt, escape apparatus on the wall, it's a Davis escape system but in a little cupboard that just lets you run out of the building as if you're going down by parachute, it's a little harness you wear on it, a brake system that lets you lower yourself down if there's a fire, although as us keepers say if there is a fire in this place you know where you're going to go. You're either going to burn to death in the building or lower yourself down into the sea. So <laughs> it pays your money and you takes your chances. Also to the left of that is a life raft. Um, that again is if you have to abandon the lighthouse. And once again, how on earth are you supposed to launch these things when you're about 50 feet up or so? Is uh, Your guesses are as good as mine. Right, up to the um, next level, we come against the first door. This comes into a little um, sort of balcony area and you've got a window on our left leading out to the outside world only a couple of feet deep and inside is another room and somebody's pumping up some water upstairs there's a header tank up here and this room is tiny by comparison to the one below it's one window again inside and one on the sort of passageway outside the door's been removed so it's quite open there's a freezer here, a bit of a chair, box of tools, although most of them are missing, station battery chargers, and loads of batteries, emergency light battery charger, a telephone to the outside world, although it's mainly used for the telemetry, the automation, and the uh, said header tank above us and it's um, about three shelves up there with different gear some oil and stuff like that electrical stairs wolf on one box and uh, a wolf rock blocking decker workbench here as well oh and some MPX 30 oil stuffed around in the corner there right back onto the landing through the fire door up to the next level which is the kitchen level. Right, on this landing, there's another door in front of us leading up the spiral staircase. There's a window to our left, which is uh, the same for all of the landings, starting on the one below. And the, the window, the recess between the outside shutters and the inside windows is sort of taken over by all sorts. And this particular one, it's all fresh fruit and vegetables, carrots and Brussels sprouts in there and some cabbage. Right, turn right in the door into the kitchen. 
Right, this kitchen has uh, all been redone since the keepers have been taken off. So a lot would a lot would have changed. There's two windows, one of which is open at the moment. That's why you can hear the noise of the sea. So I'll just shut that. Right, two windows, as I said, one either side of the door. The room, if I can get to a wall, is one, two, three, four, five steps, and you're across it. Right, you have a kitchen sink, a little belling cooker, one of those tiny little things, the electric, a um, few cupboards, a little alcove by the window where there's a bit of a work surface and tucked underneath above is a microwave cooker um, just by the door as you come in is a little half round table three chairs a little cupboard above with a TV and an indoor area on it above that are some uh, survival rations just to your left inside the door is a, a sailor set the radio uh, further left as you come in there's a little alcove tucked round with shelves and there's a telephone uh, first aid gear and some magazines down there and then it's taken up with three little what I wouldn't call very comfortable chairs I've been here for a few days just doing the video in with a, with a plumber and an electrician on station and they're really um, naff would be a polite word and uh, that's basically it for in the kitchen. Right, back out onto the landing, through the fire door, up to the next level. The next level is the bedroom level. We're on the landing outside the door. Windows open. Stormy day out there. Right, the window out there it's the same as all windows in the lighthouse, you've got two storm shutters, it's all made of um, uh, phosphor bronze gunmetal. And the two storm shutters are the outside, um, only the top two segments are glazed, they can be shut and bolted. Then you have the deep recess, which is the thickness of the tower walls, it's about two foot up here. Then you get the two inside panes that can be shut, which is... Um, or four separate panes in a cross sort of uh, setup and they can be bolted in three places so you can shut the window quite tight then this one being unmanned they've got an extra section that uh, goes across the uh, outside storm shutters inside and screws shut to give it extra uh, strength to withstand the water um, on this or in this recess in, in this window is uh, what would normally be used as a saucepan but um, on most lighthouses outside the bedroom window the thing that's in the window is normally used as the pea bucket so if you're going down several floors in the middle of the night so that gets used, tossed out the window right in the bedroom little curved door like everywhere else in here uh, in front of you is like a semicircle cupboard affair with, with uh, what can be described as pieces cut out of it. Um, and the, there's three sections like the cutouts in front of me, one in the middle in front, one to the left, one to the right. The, these are where the bunks are, curved bunks, curved uh, mattresses. The one on the right has a window and the one in the middle has a window and they're the only windows in this room bunks have lights and a few little shelves and that's it and looking up there's uh, what was two bunks above one's filled in now and there's tanks up there for water supply but the one above the middle bunk can still be used below the bunks there's a row of uh, little cupboards with lockable doors. Now the middle bunk that I'm in, um, down one wall is some pipes coming from up above and that's for the uh, fuel and water. When they store the lighthouses as it were they drop 
caterpillar tanks on the heli deck above and then gravity fed it down to the tanks. So at the foot of my bed, about a foot from the end, there's a little section cut out of the mattress so the pipes can go through, which is <laughs> different to say the least. I'll just uh, close the bedroom door a bit so I can hear myself speak. Um, another thing about this bunk, or well, these bunks, my one is the uh, same as the others, the middle one here, and it's only about six foot long. I'm five foot five and a half and fit it quite well, but I hate to think what a ginormous keeper would uh, fit in there like. You have to s actually sleep like a banana, that's why I think they were named banana bunks. Now, there's uh, about four, seven, eight going on outside at the moment. Been building all night. And now we've got these great big Atlantic swells coming in from the southwest. And about three o'clock this morning, three to half past, I was awoken by some great big thumps down below. When the waves hit this place, it really cracks. Uh, it's quite loud. And then um, some cracks louder than others. And what you would think the louder crack would be the the biggest shake of the building, but that hasn't been the case. The biggest cracks seem to be um, not shake so much, but the the ones that are just about half the volume in in noise. Laying in bed this morning, sort of being shaken quite um, quite visibly, and. All I can liken it to was when I was in the Navy in a sh in an aircraft carrier going through the side of a hurricane and the, the ship was really grinding into these waves and as it dug in and, and began to shake itself loose from the wave to ride up for the next one it sent this sort of shake or a tremor right through the whole ship and that's what it's like uh, or was like laying in bed this morning being shaken by these waves quite uh, an experience and it looks like uh, the waves have built up so it should be even more spectacular. And the other thing was um, I got up about five to go downstairs because I realized one of the shutters weren't shut on the storm shutters in the kitchen and the floor was covered in water so I mopped that up. And in fact I was getting waves um, smashing against the storm shutters on my bedroom window here. And also when I got up this morning I went up to have a look outside and there was water in the service room which is the next level up on the floor. So that must have come from the floor above and sort of leaked down the steps. So that's either the waves or the spray of it. Anyway we're going up to the next level now which is the service room. front right it's gonna get noisy from here on in because above us is the engines one running one on standby this is the service room it's uh, what can be politely called as cluttered and there's four windows in here all the storm shutters are sealed on the outside. In here you have the microwave link and telemetry for the computer control in the lizard, fog signal control cubicle and the navigation light cubicle telling you about the main and second main etc. You've got loads of electrical cabinets on the wall and in a bit of a space between the two doors the one coming up and the one going up to the engine room the uh, level is a fridge freezer and that's what uh, we've got in our gearing so when you actually come round to get any food around this place it's up and down all day going from freezer to kitchen and kitchen to freezer etc and to the side of that is a box about six feet high for plant A and plant B uh, telling you what the engines are doing. 
and there's a door to more steep flight of steps going up to the engine room itself and the engine room is going to be rather noisy so I won't be able to speak up there well I've actually passed through the engine room uh, where there is two Hawker Sidley listers one's on and one on standby I'm now in the lens room which has an aluminium steel floor which is vibrating like mad so you can hear what the noise is like so if you ever thought it was peaceful on a lighthouse <laughs> now you're no different in front of me is the lens on a pedestal uh, the pedestal plus the what I would call a very small lens the whole structure is only about eight maybe ten feet high so it's roughly a four foot platform or pedestal and then the rest is the lens the lens to me isn't obviously the original as it's so small uh, dwarfed in this giant lantern room and the lantern room all the glazing on the outside is uh, diamond shaped crisscross shapes and beyond that is more crisscross shapes of steel metal work which is the structure that holds the helicopter platform up on the roof above the lens is a emergency light which just is just a series of headlamps right we're now back in the base of the tower right by the entrance door it's all been battened down for a storm just to uh, show you what it sounds like when the waves hit some water squirted in the door then. To be honest, it sounds louder upstairs, but uh, and you can't feel any movement down here. But upstairs, it did not have uh, trembled the building. Another one just searching. Luckily, the prevailing wind takes it past the door. Earlier on, about an hour and a half before high water. Oops, there's another one. I was up at the um, helipad, hanging over the edge, filming this while it was coming in. And uh, at one point, the viewfinder was just filled, filled with white water, and I thought I was going to get wet. And I was 120 foot above the water, and the whole tower shook underneath me. Quite, quite something that was. And to be in the lens um, later on and watch the water actually hit against the glazing when you're a good hundred feet above the sea level some, some waves out there 